Hey everyone, Kenji here. Uh, I'm making some lunch for myself and my daughter. We're gonna do like a sort of country style French supper. We're gonna make an omelet with some uh, morels on the side. Uh, an omelet stuffed with morels. And we're gonna simultaneously make it a uh, spring vegetable salad, but that will be another video. Uh, so morels, what we're gonna do is we're gonna saute these very simply, shallots, butter, um, throw in a little parsley, throw in a little vermouth, um, and then we're going to use that to stuff our eggs. Um, and as I think I mentioned in my last video when I cooked some morels with chicken, um, these guys are like made for soaking up butter and flavor. Um, you can see all those teeny nooks and crannies. Shallot. Oh, by the way, maybe I should mention a little something about boards. Um, so cutting boards, I, this big cutting board, by the way, I got as a, a gift from um, an old chef of mine, Barbara Lynch. Um, when you set up your board, you always wanna make sure that it's close to the edge of the board, of, of the of the, um, the table, because you, you saw what I just did where I was um, cutting that shallot. And when you make like, um, when you make your horizontal sh cuts on foods, um, if your board is too far, is too close to the table or you're working too far up your board, you can't get in there. So you really need space for your hand to go underneath the edge of the board to be able to make those horizontal cuts properly. Cause that's how you get this like, you know, nice fine dice and a shallot. Oh, that's still pretty hot. It's all right. No, not too hot. We're good. Let those guys cook down a little bit. Mortar and pestle is one of the easiest ways to make a salad dressing. You don't have to worry about like, um, you know, the whole thing with the vinaigrette, like drizzling the oil in slowly and um, <clears throat> keeping your board stable. Uh, so those mushrooms are brown nicely. A little bit of shallot in there. I'll grab my vermouth. Where's my vermouth at? Where's my vermouth at? There you go. There's some vermouth. A little vermouth and a little, uh, let me grab some shoyu soy sauce. A little touch. Just to kind of bring out that mushroominess. Vermouth for the acidity and that sort of complexity that it adds, all the other flavors that it brings to the table. We'll shut that off heat. Um, and now we're gonna make an omelet. So when I make an omelet, I, little splash of water at the bottom as we preheat over medium high to high. Um, let's start this, okay. And what that water does is it's going to tell us sort of uh, give us an indication of how hot the pan is. Um, so once that water has evaporated, um, we know that the pan is now starting to get up to, you know, above, um, uh, above 212 degrees Fahrenheit, above 100 degrees Celsius. Um, and so by the time the water has evaporated and sort of danced off, like I know most of the pan is probably up to closer to like 250, 300 degrees. Um, and that's about where I want it to be when I add my butter. We'll do a three egger here. Look at this, this is what's gonna annoy people. I put one in the compost and one by, right back in the carton. They're all gonna end up in the compost eventually, so it doesn't really matter. Bit of butter, put the sauce. Let's put some parsley in there. Some salt, some salt and vinaigrette. Mm. 
need a splash of water. Just to get it to the right consistency. Six of scratch for seasoning. Mmm, those are delicious. All right, so water is kind of dancing around there. You can see that light and frost effect in action. So the light and frost effect is where the waters, um, the the bubbles, um, the steam they're producing causes the bubble, um, the each droplet of water to actually lift off the pan so it flows around much more easily and it kind of dances around the skillet. That's called the light and frost effect. All right, so one final beat for our eggs. I'm gonna use the fork method. Um, people have asked me, is it okay to use a fork and nonstick? Um, the answer is yes, as long as you don't actually touch the pan with it, um, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, I might, you know, I, I touch the edges just a little bit, but not enough that it's gonna burn it or anything. Okay. So you see the pork kind of floats along the bottom. It doesn't actually touch the pan. You're not here. You don't hear any scraping from the pan. So I do it with tines pointed up and kind of floating along the bottom like that. All right. Now those eggs are just about not quite not quite there. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. All right. That's about where I want it. Still pretty loose. Okay, now we're gonna get this side up and over. We've got just a touch of browning on there, that's okay. Then we, oop, come back here, fork. And loosen up this side. Give it a hit. All right, this is somewhere between a French omelet and a country omelet, which is what I'm gonna say I was going for. Okay, so now what we do is we pick up the pan this way, which is much easier to do when you don't have a camera strapped to it. Okay. And let's flip it out. Look at that. We'll call this a, um, I don't know what we call it, a gentleman's omelet. A refined farmer's omelet. Not quite golden French style, not quite um, really hearty country style, but just delicious. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little slit. Ooh, look at that. See how nice and soft and tender it is inside. And that little slit is where our sauce is going to go. sunlight make it easier for you to see here and this will be lunch for Alicia and I Here we go. That, that is a good looking lunch. What do you say? What say you? Mmm. Mmm. Raw snap peas. Oh man. Oop, there's an unpeeled puppy bean. Oh man. So, 
I know normally I aim for either really rustic and nicely browned on the outside, or I aim for um, more classic golden French style. But this is actually really good. A little bit golden, but still nice and soft and tender on the inside. Kind of like, I don't know, happy little accident. All right, guys. I'm going to get my daughter. We're going to eat lunch. Bye. Oh, no, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot the most important part. Sit. Boop. <laughs> sorry. Oh, Hamon came for some today, too. No, Shabu. Not for you. Here you go, Hamon. There you are. Shabu? No. <laughs> no, Shabu. Back up. All right. All right, now I'll see you guys later. Elise, are you ready for lunch?